everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I thank you for joining me today. This is going to be the first in a series of a stitch along making the Sweet Pea Dachshund Tote Bag. This is the cutest little thing. I will put a link to this below the video. And anything that I talk about on here, I will make sure to link below the video in the description box. If you're a dog lover like me, or maybe you have a dog lover in your family, this will be a lot of fun and it would make a super cute gift for somebody. The panel behind me is by Lorelei Designs and I will link to it below. And the, pa the pattern on my t-shirt is from Urban Threads and I will link to that below as well. Somebody always asks. All right, so if you are new to embroidery, this is what is called an in the hoop project. Well, that sounds kind of funny because don't you use a hoop to make everything for embroidery? Well, yeah, usually. <laughs> but an in the hoop in embroidery language, in the hoop means that you can finish an entire project in the hoop. You're not just stitching a regular embroidery design. This is not an in the hoop project. This is an in the hoop project. So this particular project is a little bit different than a regular in the hoop embroidery project because the final size is completely up to you. And what I'm going to make in this one is the one that looks just like this picture. And the way this, this project is put together is in panels. And if you look at this tote bag, there are three panels on the front and three panels on the back. And the cuteness of the whole thing is that the dog seems to wrap around the tote bag. So we have the head panel, the body panel, and a blank panel. And then on the back, we have another body panel. It, the, the pattern calls it end, but it's the tail panel and then another blank panel. So this particular tote bag will have six panels in it. If you wanted to make the tote bag longer, you would add additional body panels. So you would have, if you wanted to make it, you know, one more panel longer, you would have uh, two blank panels, a head panel, four body panels, and a tail panel. They need to be even. If you've got three on the front, you need three on the back. If you've got four on the front, you need four on the back. Otherwise, your seams will be wonky on the whole thing. So also, I'd like you to take an, a, a look at this and kind of analyze this picture a little bit. We've got the top border and we've got the bottom, they call it border on, on this particular tote bag. Don't cut these pieces until you're sh sure how long these are gonna be. In this video, we're gonna stitch the head panel and the two blank panels. The next video, we're gonna stitch the body panels and the tail panel, and then the last video, we're gonna put the whole bag together. So you don't wanna cut these pieces right here until you're sure how long or how wide these pieces are gonna be, all right? So we're gonna wait to cut these. Now, as you look at your pattern, this dog is very scrappy. So for the first head panel that we're gonna do, you need one background piece and there are seven little pieces of fabric that go along in this. I am using a couple of fat quarters and then my scrappy part is going to be a, a five inch, a set of five inch squares that coordinate with the rest of my fabrics. That's a perfect use for those, those little squares. The head will have one background piece and seven scraps. I've got some notes here, so I tell you guys right. The body will have a background and five scraps or you know small pieces of fabric. The tail will have a background and six scraps. And then the blank is just one background piece per blank panel. You're going to want to use cutaway stabilizer in this. And cutaway stabilizer, I've hooped one piece of it. I've already cut my six pieces of cutaway stabilizer and cutaway it's 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 really hard to tear like you cannot tear it this is the difference it's it's you have to cut it with scissors in order to trim it you can tell the difference 
Here is a piece of tearaway stabilizer and it tears like paper. So you want to make sure the stabilizer you have is called cutaway. All of the stitching that's on there, you need that for that, for that stability. When you choose your thread colors, it's completely up to you. If you analyze the picture, they used a solid color around the dog that matches the top uh, border up here, the top of the bag, and then the ear is just a different color, a little bit different color. If you print the pattern, which I recommend, unless you've got it right on a tablet right there by you, I recommend that you take time to go ahead and number your pages down at the bottom. That'll be very helpful to you to keep you straight. There's a total of 36 pages. So let me show you what you're gonna need to be able to make this tote bag. To make this tote bag, you're going to need the same number pieces of stabilizer, cutaway stabilizer, that equals the number of panels that you want to make in your tote bag. You're going to need the same number of pieces of batting. This is a Hobbs 80-20 batting. You're going to need fabric panels. I am, I'm making six, so you need, I have one, two, three, four, five, six panels for this. You're going to need a strip of fabric for the top and the bottom of the bag. You're going to need scraps to make up your dog. You're going to need a firm surface for cutting when you need to remove the hoop and trim the batting. You're going to need a good pair of curved embroidery scissors. These are Gingers. I highly recommend them. They are not inexpensive, but don't go cheap. You'll buy one pair, you'll have them for your whole life, and they don't hurt your fingers. And then you're going to need different color embroidery threads. These embroidery threads will work with my fabric and this is an embroidery thread tree. I highly recommend that you get one of these. This just sits behind the embroidery machine and I put my threads on that I'm going to need and then I pull their tails up and over and I just kind of tuck them into this little spring at the top and that keeps them out of the way. In my machine I have a pre-wound 90 weight embroidery thread bobbin and I am using an Organ 7511 needle. It's an EBBR. If you are using a brother or a baby lock machine, I highly recommend that you use organ needles. They are timed with them at the manufacturer and your machine will perform best with organ needles. If you are having any kind of continual thread shredding, if you're using a different brand, I recommend that you go ahead and try an organ needle. They should have come with your machine when you purchased it, unless you, of course, you know, got it secondhand and then you wouldn't know that. As far as the threads, I'm using a combination of Madeira Poly Neon and Isocord. And you can use any kind of embroidery thread that you have that your machine likes to use. Yes, machines like certain kinds of threads. They're very picky. So I have sent the uh, design wirelessly using Embrilliance software. I will link to that below as well. Embrilliance software is a wonderful third-party embroidery software that works with every single kind of embroidery machine. You can install it on your laptop or your desktop computer and edit to your heart's content and then you can save it to a USB stick and take it to your machine or if you have the Luminaire, which is the XP1 from Brother, or the Baby Lock Solaris, then you can send designs wirelessly over to your machine, which is what I did. So I'm going to move the camera over here to the screen so you can see what I'm doing, and then I'll bring you back over here so you can watch what we're doing. Okay, here's the home screen. I'm going to go to Embroidery. And since I sent it wirelessly I uh, need to get to the memory and the memory is the pocket and here's the wireless icon if I had if I had it on a USB I would use the USB icon or maybe I had saved it to a chip but I sent it wirelessly and here he is dog head right there and I'm gonna hit set and embroidery when you're looking at your embroidery screen most machines will tell you all of this information some way or another 
This will tell me the size and it tells me what hoop I can use or not. It says I can use three of them and then the little four by four I can't. Uh, the design is going to be 7.01 by 5.06. If I wanted to edit it in any way I could, I can scan here with a camera and here it lists all of the different steps that are going to be done to stitch out the dog. I'm gonna hit embroidery. Now in this screen, it tells me that it has 6,787 stitches. There are 28 different thread uh, stitches, not necessarily thread changes, because a lot of them are the same color. We're gonna use white. I'm gonna use white for most of the patch, uh, scrappy patches on the dog. There's, there's only a, just a few real true color changes and the actual stitch time here is 13 minutes. Most machines also have a button. I'm gonna point down here and show you. This is the needle plus minus button. When you touch this, this is going to allow you to, you can use up or down arrows to go through if you watch right here in the picture, you can go through the different stitches that are going to happen. So I'm scrolling through the thread colors. This is very important to know if you make a mistake and you need to go back and fix something. That's how you do it. You just go through most machines. I know this one's very fancy, but most machines uh, have the ability to do this. Also, this one, you can go plus one stitch, 10 stitches, 100 stitches, or 1,000 stitches, or you can go backwards those same amount of stitches. This is one of the reasons I love machine embroidery. It is so forgivable, and it's very easy to recover if there is ever a mistake. One thing you do need to look at when you make a mistake and there's a problem, you'll want to pay attention to how far along you are in the stitch count. If you have to go back, you want to make sure that you can get back to the part where everything went wonky. So I'm going to go out a little bit here and then to start from the very beginning, you can just press zero and then you can see up here, it went to zero again. So again, let me, I'll, I'll push forward on a couple of, of colors, 319, 643, see that? That's how you navigate around on the machine when you're doing machine embroidery. So if there's a boo-boo, pay attention to that number to find out exactly where you are so you know where to get back to. That's a lifesaver. I'm gonna click OK. And we are ready to go. I am going to go ahead and thread the machine with white. So the way I like to change threads on the machine is I will go ahead and pull out the one that I need out of the little spring and I will run it through the first thread guide in the tower up there. I have a piece of gray from a previous project in here and I've gotten real close up because I get questions about how I thread the machine. If you don't have any thread in your machine at all, you need to look at your manual and thread it according to your manufacturer's instructions. Brothers and Baby Locks are very easy, as are most machines. They will have a numbering system to tell you how to thread. This piece of thread was in here from a previous project. So what I do is I get the ends very close to the same length. I do, I kind of twist them just a little bit so they think that they're one and I just do a single knot, a single loop, and put the tails through. Hope you can see. Oh, you can't see. Hmm. I wanna do this so my fingers aren't in the way. I do, I just kind of twist them together so they think they're one. And then I just do a single loop like this and put the tails through. Just a single loop is very easy to make sure, and then I just pull it tight. That's it. And then I pull from in front of the needle. 
until everything has gone through the machine and I get it ready for threading. I need to put a hoop in my machine. The very first thing you want to do is to take a piece of batting and you want to lay it in your machine inside the hoop. Batting, especially a, uh, a cotton batting like this, will have uh, bumps on one side. Most of them do. If you have a poly, you really won't have that. So you want to put the bumpy side down. I've heard it said that um, these bumps, you could think of them like blemishes on your face, pimples, and you want the pimple side down. It's kind of gross, but I've heard that. <laughs> so, And um, my button has turned green. We are ready to go, and it is going to stitch out the first stitch and it, that is a tack down for the batting. All right, you want to remove the hoop. I'm putting it in my lap on this firm cutting surface. This is the June Taylor's uh, cut and press, quilt and press, and I recommend you get one. You will use it every time you do an embroidery project. You want to take your scissors and trim away the extra batting around the stitch line. Right. One thing I didn't mention, you're also going to want a trash can. You never take your project out of the hoop until you're completely finished with it. Even if you make a mistake and you think you need to take it out of the hoop, I don't recommend that you do that. If you make a mistake, you can go back and put more fabric over the boo-boo and then keep going. Don't take it out of the uh, hoop or you will lose the orientation and it's just going to need to be thrown away. It is almost impossible to get back to where you need to be if you remove your project from the hoop. All right, put the hoop back in the machine. And the next step is a tack down of your fabric. So because I am doing the head, the head is actually going to be done on this um, blender fabric I have right here. I got little threads on there I need to get off. So it's going to tack it down now. You don't need to use tape or anything like that. Okay, you do not need to trim away this outer fabric yet. We're gonna leave that in there like that. Now you're going to want to take a look at your diagram so you know what pieces are being placed when. And what it's going to do is it's going to create what's called a placement stitch. So if you can look on your screen or look in your instructions, the placement stitch that it's going to do first is the top of the head. And it is going to tell you where to put your fabric. That's what a placement stitch is. It tells you where to place your fabric. You want to put your fabric so that it completely covers all around the placement stitch by at least half an inch so you've got enough um, fabric to grab a hold of and trim. This is the tack down stitch. If you have a scan and cut, you may want to go ahead and take uh, that particular stitch and put it into the scan and cut and create 
cut files yourself. Um, I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way since a lot of people don't have cutting machines or they don't have cutting machines that read the PES file format. So now you want to take your embroidery scissors and grab a corner of this and just kind of go around. This is why you need good sharp scissors to get in and trim all of this away. You don't want to trim the stitching but you want to trim as close to it as possible. If you make a mistake and you cut into it, that's really not going to be that big of a deal because there will be satin stitching all the way around it and you can always also get under there with a glue stick and maybe glue that back down and if your fabric doesn't cover all of the stitching let's say um, let's say that the end of the nose didn't get covered by fabric that's okay you would back up one like I showed you earlier you would back up one stitch to, back to the beginning of where the, the tack down stitch went and put more fabric over the top of it. There will be two layers of fabric, but that's okay. Nobody will know the difference when it's all said and done. The next is the bottom part of the muzzle. Put your hoop back in the machine. This is the placement line for the bottom part of the muzzle. And you want to take a piece of fabric and place it over the placement line and stitch it down. Oh, see that? Got a little problem there. I'm going to hit my scissor button. Not a big deal. I'm going to trim it. I'm going to rethread my needle a little. Get a nice clean end on there. Whenever that happens and you got a little boo boo like that, go ahead and pull it out. You want to make sure there's no kind of big major knotting problem going on on the back. Everything looks okay. And we want to make sure that the bobbin is threaded properly. Anytime you need, you, you've got a snag like that, you're going to take the bobbin out. Rethread it. There we go. Let's try this again. These things happen. If you are armed with the knowledge of how to fix things, you can tackle these projects uh, and have a lot of fun at it. Okay, remove the hoop again and trim around the placement line for the muzzle. Now we're going to start doing something that resembles what's called quilt as you go method. And you're going to, your machine is going to stitch a placement line. And you want to put your fabric just over the placement line face down. And it will stitch it on top of that and then you will fold that back over and crease it and get it flat and it will stitch it down again in the design. So I will show you step by step how to do this. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to create the placement line for the next piece which is going to be the neck. And I think I want to use a little orange for the neck. So to do that you want to place your fabric face down about a quarter of an inch over that placement line and you want to make sure you're going to have enough to fold it over and cover the entire neck area. Now you want to take your fabric and fold it down toward you and you can just do a little finger crease and fold that down so that it's straight. If you want, you can take a little tool and crease it. 
Either way, it'd be fine. Now it's going to stitch the neck. And you're going to want to remove the hoop and trim the excess fabric away from the neck. Next is the placement line for step number 10, which is going to be the bigger part of the body right there. And I think I'm gonna use this pretty yellow for that. Again, you want to place it uh, face down. Leave yourself enough fabric behind it so when you fold it over, you will be able to cover all of the body part and the tack down stitch and fold the fabric back down nice and flat and let it stitch that step Remove the hoop and trim the fabric from around the upper body. One thing I did not mention earlier is whenever you are removing the hoop from the arm, you always want to put your hand on the arm and hold it some way or another so that the arm doesn't shift accidentally at all. If it does shift, you can use your needle plus minus and go back to a point where the arm is going to be in the right orientation. It is time for a thread change to do the satin stitching around the muzzle. Okay, and the next stitch is the all over stitching for all around the outside of the dog. Okay, step number 21, we're going to embroider the iris of the eye. And my little guy's eyes are going to be blue. Okay, 
stitch the wrong color. If you stitch the wrong color somewhere, not a big deal, how you fix that is, you do not unpick it from the front. You want to unpick it from the back. You want to come in from the back and run one of your power tools with thread seam rippers, shameless plug, you guys, but through the bobbin stitching and you just want to slice it through and not slice your thumb like I almost did right there. And just kind of get that from the back as good as you can. And then from the front, uh, use your power tools with thread stiletto. I didn't do this on purpose to plug my husband's uh, fabulous sewing tools, but while we're here, I mean, that happens, you know, it's no big deal. There. So now that's coming up real good. Yeah, you don't want to start unpicking from the front because you run the risk of uh, slicing into your fabric, and you don't want to do that. You want to see where your problem stitch is and get to it from the back if you can. It's amazing how much thread is in one tiny little spot. There we go. Okay, I got that cleaned up. Now, let's put the right color fabric in, or thread, shall we? That would always help. <laughs> I got one step ahead of myself. Oh, stop. I didn't go backwards a step. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to go backwards on my screen, minus a spool. There. Alright, now step 22. Now we're going to give it a little blue eye. I got ahead of myself. And the highlight on the eye, I'm going to use white again. Number 24. Tell it's got a lot of knots back there. I handled it just fine. Okay, time for the nose. So I'm going to go back to black. All right, it's time for the placement line for the ear. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the same color that I'm going to use for the ear. Placement line for the ear. And the placement line is usually in red on your screen or your software. Fabric down, have some little bows on his ear. Remove the hoop from the machine and trim around the stitching. And now it's time for the satin stitching around the ear. Okay, it has finished sewing. The instructions tell you now to cut out, uh, remove it from your hoop, and you want to cut it one half inch away from the seam line all the way around. Okay, you'll notice there's some little fibers that came up right here. You can try, you know, they didn't get caught in the satin stitching. You can try to pick those out and trim them. You will need a very good sharp set, but you still may have, like here, you can see the teal through the purple. So very carefully, you want to take the embroiderer's best friend, which is a Sharpie and a fine point Sharpie at that and you can test the color on your stabilizer and make sure that's gonna work. So like here's some white threads, I'm just going to touch those up. Look at that. This is just, just barely touch it. You don't have to uh, bleed it, you know, you just barely wanna touch it. Color those in and nobody will be the wiser. And believe me, next week you won't even be able to find it. So this is just a nice way to kind of touch up your work. Just a little bit, very light touch. That looks great. I like it. I am going to go ahead now and stitch the other two plain panels that will be used for the bag. But the head is finished and I just think it's precious. Okay. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to trim all of my blocks at one time. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave this for right now until I have the stack of all six of them. All 
right, from here on the screen now, we're finished with the head. I'm going to hit return. Oh, I have to go into edit and then delete on this machine. Okay, to delete the selected pattern, I'm going to tell it okay. On the Luminaire, I can just go to home and it knows I don't want to do that anymore. And so now I'm going to go into uh, the USB. This one has a pocket as well, but this pocket means internal memory to the machine. And so I can go directly to USB on this one. And you'll see my Power Tools with Thread USB stick out here doing its thing. <laughs> and I'm going to make two of these blank panels. One for the front, one for the back. And on the baby lock now, I have to say Set. And Edit End. And Sewing. And it's ready to go. I'm going to change my thread color to white. My background fabric on these are white, so I'm going to change it to white. And this is going to be two panels made identically. And then we will be done with today's stitching. All right, the first thing we have to do, just like before, uh, bumpy side down. I'm going to put my batting in. I'm going to remove my hoop and trim around the outside of the batting. And now I'm going to put down my background fabric and stitch. All right, this panel is finished. I'm going to make one more and meet you back over at the sewing table. All right, so we finished two blank panels. These one in the front, one in the back, and we finished the head. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out, you may have noticed, I didn't talk about it during the whole thing, but I uh, had a little pro problem with the uh, Luminaire. The bobbin case kept jumping out, and it, you know, as soon as I heard the noise, I stopped it. I did not remove the, the project from the hoop. I just took the hoop and popped it into my Baby Lock Elegante 2, and just brought over the design on my machine. If you have an older machine of, the, of a like brand, you can do that. Now, if it were a, a Bernina or a different manufacturer, I wouldn't have been able to do that. But I was able to do it um, uh, between the baby lock and the brother, you can do that. So, that, I just wanted to explain why there was a different uh, machine here at the end. But, you know, hey, it's an oldie but a goodie. This machine must be, I don't know, 10, 12 more <laughs> years old. And uh, it works pretty good. So, all right. So, so, tomorrow we will do the body blocks, both of those, front and back, and the tail. And so, that's all we're going to do for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned a few things. And, uh, you know, if you, even if you make a little mistake, you can always fix it, right? We'll talk to you soon. Go sew something.